Hi, I'm Ben. Hi, I'm Claire. And we are Hi Jinx. Jinx. And we're going to cast our minds back a few months to a beautiful gin festival that we went to down in South East London before in Christmas. Catford. Catford. It's, there, there aren't a large number of cats there, I don't think. Um, there aren't more than... Disappointingly enough. I know, exactly. That's the only reason Claire went in the first place. Sure. Um, but um, the kind of the mitigating factor, the second prize, was a gin festival. Yeah. And, um, in a really beautiful theatre. Yeah, the Broadway, the Broadway theatre. Broadway theatre. Stunning Catford. venue. Um, yeah, really old school, like, toy town theatre. And they just, like, pull back the stage um, and pull back the curtains and get on with it. Yeah, um, and I think what was really interesting about the festival is they made sure that they had all sort of really sort of small batch gins, most of them we hadn't heard of before, yeah. up and coming products, really, really interesting festival, you know, you didn't have all of your, your big names there, and th I think most of them, they were all, were they relatively local, or at least British? Mainly um, British. Mainly um, British. Yeah, all over Britain. But yeah. yeah, like you say, very small batch ones. And you know, like in you know, Liverpool has Liverpool gin, um, um, and a couple of others. But um, you had Turncoat gin from there, which is a beautiful gin that's just started up. That's much on put on a much smaller production level than Liverpool gin, and a much smaller spread. Um, really, really delicious stuff. Stuff you know, because I mean, people are making new gins all the time. But they are. These, these these are you know really championing kind of local businesses not local yeah. necessarily to the area but local throughout the yes. UK. Yes and I feel like they were really well selected because mm. they were all very good. I mean our and issue was that we tried one and we thought oh we want to go home with that one but then you get to the next one and by the end of it you think which one do I want to buy because I liked so many of them. It was so like, we've it was, got a it was few. like going clubbing in my early 20s. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know you see one yeah. and you're like oh yeah I want to go home with that one and then there's yeah. that one and that one and you just get so confused so you just yeah. end up drinking too much yeah exactly just and like then, clubbing in your twenties yeah and then going home with how many did you go home with <sighs> six so many I think I I so think many. I took three with me so naughty girl you have anyway seen. one <laughs> of them is this little gym unit six you can see I've consumed quite a lot of it but I had to save some for this video now I was particularly excited about this one because it's got it's basically trying to be the periodic table on the side here. It's sort of a very sciencey, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Vibe. Design, yeah. Design, yeah. It's also it's won a, a silver award at the International Spirits Competition. I'd like to see and, what the gold was. Yeah, exactly. And the other thing that really excited me about this one is that it's got freesia in it. Now, I had never seen freesia as a botanical in a gin. Mm. And freesia reminds me, we had freesias in my garden growing up in New Zealand, and that that really fresh floral smell that really reminds me of my childhood and running around the garden and attacking my sister and that sort of thing. So, All the fun things. The yeah, fun exactly. yeah, exactly. And it's also Violence. got, so it's got bergamot, which I love, kefir, coriander, pink pepper, and juniper, obviously. Um, so it sounded absolutely delicious and it did not disappoint. So I'm a big fan of this. Let's have a little go. Let's, um... Get yourself a clean shot glass. There's one. There's another one. Clean aside from the London Lime Scale. Oh, hang on, you probably want an actual drink. Oh, an actual, I have an actual drink. Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. just I'm trying to be good because I've got a singing lesson tomorrow. So just in case nobody knew, Claire's doing low fold map at the moment. Just in case you haven't been clear about it. So um, we're we're just being really careful about what Claire drinks. We're being a bit careful. Careful. <laughs> careful. Right. Selective. So selective. Yes, you definitely get the lime on those. You get the citrus. And the herb. And the, yeah, exactly. What is it? Is it bergamot? It's bergamot and kefir lime. Which I get less of. See, I get more of the lime. It's something I was very, say. very, very, very herbaceous. Yeah, okay. Mm. And it's on the palate that I get the freesia. Mm. I wonder if I got the um, same, same, same feel on the mouth as my shirt got. What did you taste, actually? Yeah. So, um, what's interesting about this? Yeah, citrus on the tip of the tongue, the sort of dry herbs on the back of the tongue, and then the freesia goes up my nose. Yes. I've got like the freesia and the sinuses. Yeah. So That's so great. That's if, like a if, 3D gin. It's like drinking a normal gin and tonic at a flower festival. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. You have a flower festival and you're like, oh, this is great. Mm. But you, you, you get to recreate your own flower festival with one gin. Isn't yeah. that exciting? And also I'm starting to get the pepper as well. Yeah, that comes too. It's like, yeah, pink pepper, isn't it? Yeah. That slightly sort of sweeter note of pepper. Yeah. So um, it just gives you a nice little zing. Yeah, exactly. A little bit of... Ooh. Yeah. Right. Let's chuck it into... Some ice. Yes. Put some, some of these ice babies. So the ice suggested babies. serve... Ice ice babies. Perfect. The suggested serve for this one is lime. Lime. Um, 
And um, off camera, Claire just called me a peel purist, which I quite like because I just feel like <laughs> the juice of a fruit really heavily influences the flavour of a gin. Yeah, you're right. Um, and I think I, I like the oil and the perfume that you get from the um, skin and peel mm. um, rather than feeling like I'm basically drinking gin and lime juice. Because, you know, if I wanted that, I could have a gin and lime juice. Absolutely. Um, you well, know, especially with the little amount of tonic that we put in it, it basically is like having, you know, gin and fruit juice. So, yeah. Um, course, just smell the lime. You just get so many, even before you put anything in it, you just get so much aroma mm, from that. So fresh. Smell. So it's a big, yeah. it's a big flavour to it always add anyway. It immediately makes me feel like I'm at the beach or something, yeah. you know? So in itself, it's a big flavour to add without yeah. adding all the sharpness and sugar of the juice as well. Yeah. Um, little hint, I reckon you could leave a lime like um, in your sock drawer, um, leave it for a few days in your sock drawer and you would eliminate, you know, and all in your shoes, you know, like where your shoes are, anywhere that like that is a bit smelly, just leave a lime in there and you'd sort, sort yourself that out. That was life hacks. Yeah, absolutely. Although you, ideally if your socks are in your sock drawer they probably should be washed, I mean. I would think so. Yeah. Yeah, so with the ice in there, just sort of it sort of separates it out a little bit more, doesn't it? Makes it more coherent as a gin. It makes and actually brings the juniper through. Yes, more separate but also more coherent. Mm. It's more of a sense. gin. Yeah. More of a gin rather than a bouquet now. Yeah. So that's quite interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, jun the, the additional juniper is much what I get out of that. Okay. And now with a little splash of full fat thieves. Even when you, like, before you even drink it, like, the way it coats the glass. Mm. So, when I tweeted about this back after the festival, when I was drinking it at home, I described it as a peppery citrus party in my mouth. And that's what I'm getting now, and that's what I love. It's so much fun. It's like you've got the lime, you've got the pepper, you know. It's very it's... distinctively pink pepper as well. It's not yeah. just like a kind of rush of pepper up your nose. It's very distinctively got it's that It's like sweetness. a light, sparkly pepper. Yeah. Feels like something that I would drink by the beach, having a good time, you know. Makes me pink, want to get up and dance around. Pink pepper around. lends itself so well to gin. These sort of slightly sweet, mm. sweet but sharp, sweet but spicy, those sort of things. You know, like grapefruit with gin. It's all that sort of vibe, citruses. Yeah. Um, yeah, they really lend themselves very well to um, kind of going with gin. What are you up to? So, it's been a little while since we've added a drop of tucker into one of our gins, and I feel like this is a gin. You love a drop Because it's a peppery citrus party. What could possibly be better than adding a little bit of spicy chili? So, really quickly, I'm going to add the teeniest, teeniest weaves of tucker. Oh, sorry, the sun went behind a cloud or something. <gasps> so basically, you just pour it onto the spoon and then pour it back in the... This, oh, for anyone who water. doesn't know what tucker is, it's a um, Carolina Reaper chili infused vodka. Carolina Reaper is the hottest natural chili on earth. So, um, to put, they have a thing called the um, Scoville scale. So um, a chili, uh, a Tabasco sauce is 5,000 on the Scoville scale. Sorry, yeah. Um, Carolina Reaper is 1.2 million. So that's how much hot, how, how yeah. hot it is. So you, you saw, I just, put, I just put like not even a full droplet in there. You and put a now, full droplet on the spoon and then put there it is back a, in. There is not only a peppery citrus party, there is a, a reapery peppery, peppery citrus, party. citrus party. You're a peppery citrus party. I know, I mean, I, I, might, bring... I might actually put the whole spoon in. Is that really bad? You ready for this? I'm afraid for you. Jesus, Maria. Um, let's have a go. Quite quick, because we, we've parked on a little bit in this episode. No, uh, it's really nice. It's Good, really nice. eh? Hey, no, it's perfect. So, um, even if you don't have a little bottle of taco, I'm trying to convince him to market this stuff, but mm. um, even if you don't, even if you just got, got like one, a, a got little slice of, um, even a, like, a little slice of red chili or something would work, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would do. Something just to add a little bit of spice to it. It's yeah. really lovely. It just gives it that extra kick. It's beautiful yeah. without it, mm -hmm. but if you're somebody who likes a bit of endorphin, a few mm. endorphins, yeah, um, and um, you know, be careful with your chilies at home. You know, play play at home carefully. And remember, don't touch any of your mucus membranes after you've handled them. And remember that with the chili, the hottest bits is the seed. Yep. Right. Have fun. Cheers, Cheers. everybody.